Hey everyone, I'm so glad you came. I kinda need a little help. I've gotten into a bit of a pickle here. I know, what else is new? But you see, I got locked inside this trophy room, and the only way out is by doing a series of typing tests. Now you may be wondering how I got into this situation. Well, that story begins all the way back to when I was in third grade. This might be news to a lot of you, but my younger self went on quite the dangerous mission. I teamed up with this robot named Botley and joined him on a mission in Mystery Mountain. There, we embarked on a quest to stop an inventor's evil daughter, Polly Sparks, aka the most evil little brat who's ever lived. She deliberately failed a test and sent her father's robots back in time to change history so her answers would be correct. Bringing them back was no easy task, but not only did we manage to do it, but we learned a lot of facts about the world along the way. But this would only be the start of my journey. Soon came the haunted island, then the mine exploration, then solving a mystery with Joe Hammett, and heck, the various characters still haunt me even as an adult with a YouTube channel. But if it sounds like I just described the plots of the Jumpstart Adventures games, that's uh, kinda because I did. But hey, video games are based on true stories, right? So the Jumpstart games were a part of my childhood that I fondly look back on. I always enjoyed the wonder of going through these universes and watching the stories unravel. This and Mango Plumo were my first ever experiences with edutainment. It was so amazing to play one of these and show up at school knowing more about a certain topic than any of your classmates. You could fool people into thinking you were smart just by rambling about one subject in particular. But the Jumpstart series covered a wide selection of topics, educating children about all sorts of things. This could include math, history, science, the whole curriculum. But in October of 1997, they tried their hand at teaching kids something else entirely. So they gave us Jumpstart Typing. Now surprising as it may be, I missed this game as a kid. I learned to type from Spongebob. But it's surprising just how much this game slipped my line of sight, because it features the same characters from Jumpstart 3rd grade, which is easily my favorite of the series. And I like the idea of the Jumpstart characters teaching you to type. It sounds like it can fit in naturally with the rest of the series, so let's check it out. First, can I just say the Knowledge Adventure logo booting up at the start fills me with such a strong sense of nostalgia that I just might end up passing out? That is, if I don't pass out from starvation in this trophy room first. Knowledge Adventure was the name of the company before they rebranded as Jumpstart Games, by the way. So we're then met with our old friend Botley as he tells us to enter our name and start a new game. Welcome, keyboard athlete. We're glad you could be part of our team. Please type your name. Wow, it's been so long. There's a certain emotion that comes with seeing a character that once served as your friend in a childhood game suddenly speaking to you again. It's as if you never left. Man, Botley, you would be so disappointed if you could see me now. And for an extra sprinkle of nostalgia, he's voiced by Genie Elias again, aka Peach. So once we're in, Spotly welcomes us to Sparks Stadium, which is holding the first ever keyboarding competition. I wonder if we get a sandwich for winning. According to Rotley, top typists from around the galaxy are competing. Wow, I really hope the journey from Pluto is worth being able to say you won a typing contest. But Professor Sparks, being incredibly full of himself, has his own team called the Sparks, and the arena was built for them. I swear it isn't rigged, not at all. Just ignore the funny looking springs in the ground that send the opponents flying away, nothing to worry about. He also hired the greatest typing coach on Earth, conveniently named Coach Quirty. What, he's so obsessed with typing he had his name legally changed to that. Either that, or he was born with a destiny to be a great typist. I know you're going to be a great typist one day. But in the meantime, you have to go check on the rest of your team. And guess who's helping them warm up? That's Polly. Yeah, it's my old childhood nemesis, Polly Sparks. The same villain from Jumpstart 3rd grade who never missed an opportunity to insult us. I just know she's gonna have a lot to say as soon as I mess something up when typing. Her introduction comes in the form of a 40-minute cutscene of her struggling to lift this barbell. I should clarify it's not actually 40 minutes, shouldn't I? Jeannie Elias is also reprising her role as Polly, so we get to relive two nostalgic voices of hers at once. But she's here to start trouble again because she's been kicked off the typing team. So in her own words... He didn't even recognize my untapped typing talent. He kicked me off the team because he said I hadn't practiced my typing enough. So I accidentally, on purpose, locked Coach Cordy in the trophy room. I couldn't help it. He made me so angry. So angry. So angry. So angry. So angry. Ah, don't you just love it when games from the past run like garbage on modern devices? Thankfully, you can skip cutscenes. 
So we have to open the locks on the trophy room by recharging the power cards for each lock. <laughs> look how sad Polly is. So to recharge the cards, you have to complete time typing tests. You have to increase your words per minute typing speed each round to charge all seven. Polly is placed in charge of leading the team to recharge the cards while Motley is put in charge of mini-games, or helping the teammates on the field, as they call it. And in case you were wondering, Polly keeps up her trend of calling Butley different names. What do you say, Rusty? The name is Botley, not Rusty. Then we're given a tool belt very similar to the one in third grade. Now we can exit, ask for help with the game, open the options menu, see our progress report, and check our inventory. But the most interesting feature is the strength bar. If it gets too low, you have to head to the keyboard training center to take tests and recharge it. And guess who your teacher is? So angry! Yeah, we have to get used to hearing her. But every so often, she'll break her usual bratty voice and just talk normally. All right, we've got a lot of work to do here. But before we start, I want to see what I'm working with. Try typing what's on the screen. Remember to use your best form and type as accurately and as quickly as possible. It's so strange to me. Not that it sounds bad, but it's just like getting used to the sound of your dog barking whenever it hears someone outside, but then one day it just outright says moo. It'll take you by surprise. But while we're here, we can type to see our words per minute. Now remember, Polly's an evil little demon who won't hesitate to verbally demolish you. You better not make any mistakes, because this girl will absolutely... You did a great job on the diagnostic test! Wait, she's nice? That can't be right. Polly can't be nice to us. But actually, I like that they made her nice to you during the training stages. I'm the type of person who gets a little sad in real life whenever video game characters are upset with me. I never even choose mean dialogue options. And I think it also works when teaching kids to type. It can be discouraging to have someone calling you stupid whenever you do something wrong. So to have the ruthless villain simmer down to help you learn is actually a good decision. Now I can do decently on the time typing tests, but the lessons are a lot harder. You have to utilize our old enemy that I hate almost as much as Polly. Good old ergonomics. Listen, you can't tell me to sit properly in a chair, it's just not happening. But Polly teaches you to have proper keyboard etiquette. Then you have to type all these strange combinations of keys with it. Keyboard experts might find it easy, but not Lucy's like me. There's also free type mode where you can just type whatever. I usually just like to open random Google Docs and do that. But you really only need to focus on the lessons. What constantly trips me up is how you have to hit space twice at the end of sentences. I'm sure there's a reason for that, but I don't know it. The other thing we can do here is watch a couple tutorial movies on proper etiquette. Oh, that's clever. Seagulls. Hold on a second. Before the first word is typed, champion keyboardists know that they have to get into position. Correct posture gives you maximum control of your keyboard and helps prevent typing injuries. You're right, he might end up looking like this. So before we charge up all the cards, let's check out the games with Gottlieb. From this menu, you can select which one you want to play. In the roller racing competition, you have to help this robot skate through a course without running into the track tricksters. Eat here? But this place also says eat here. Great, now I don't know who to believe. You type the letters on obstacles to do a trick around them. It's fun, but it gets easy after a while and you just kind of get into the groove of it. Then once you beat a game, you get a gold, bronze, or silver medal with your name on it. So let's try a game that's a little less fun. In this foosball-inspired one, you're facing off with the Galaxy Gladiators. As the ball comes toward a row of your teammates, you have to type one of three letter combinations to make that row move and kick it. Timing is everything, and not always easy to analyze. There's no guarantee you'll actually hit the ball. For a strategy, you can type in harder combinations while the ball is occupied. That way they'll be easier by the time the ball reaches the respective row. I'm sure there are people who like this one, but it's just not my thing. It's hard to get a grasp on, and I'm not really good at foosball in real life anyway. But this one called Trailblazer is much easier. You have to move your entire team to the finish line by hitting the right keys to make them complete a course. The animations can be funny if they fail. It seems like a lot to keep up with, but it isn't too bad. I like it. Now for a really easy one. In this, we're in an arena where fans are cheering us on. Definitely an alternate reality for me. But you have to overturn their cards by typing the combinations on them. Then you get a motivational message. Keep on keyboarding. Greatest piece of advice anyone has ever given me. And for the last game, you have to help a robot climb a mountain by hitting keys that move it to one ledge or another. The stage has enemies that throw stuff at you, so that can be a real hindrance. They're harder to avoid than you think. But if you take damage, you actually lose strength. 
If your strength gets too far down, it's back to Polly. Actually, a fate worse than death. But all the games are fun enough. You can kill some time with these, but to finish the actual story, you have to do the time tests and charge the cards. Then you open the locks one by one until the coach is able to get out. Now let me warn you, your fingers are going to hurt. If you genuinely try to improve your words per minute, you're going to have to do some of these over and over again. This will require breaks because my fingers got legitimately sore. It's like the old saying goes, no pain, no gain. This is a jumpstart game that physically hurts you. I knew something was up when Polly was acting all nice and friendly. It wasn't to motivate me, it was to cause me physical harm. Sickening. A revolting scheme indeed. I will never forgive you, you little. So once you charge all the cards, Coach Quirty leaves the trophy room. He's very forgiving because the whole situation got Polly to work on her typing. So everyone's happy. But now it's time to win the competition. We've come a long way, and I think it's time to show everyone what we can do. After all that work, everything is about to pay off. I just can't wait to put everything I've learned to the test, and to finally- And it just cuts to you winning. I mean, thank God. My fingers were about to fall off. I'm glad I don't have anything else to do. So Professor Sparks gives a very thought-provoking speech in light of his team's victory. This year's World Keyboarding Competition has been one of the most exciting contests ever. So I'm especially proud of the Sparks for winning against some tough competitors. Hey, what's Polly doing? But my friend Botley tells me we have one person to thank for this championship, and that is... You! <gasps> me? So you're rewarded with a trophy, and then you have a dance party. What a great ending. You can even look at your trophy and medals in the inventory menu. And that brings us to the end of Jumpstart Typing. So yeah, it's a very short game, especially when compared to third grade. But it's really good. It gives you a decent challenge and encourages you to improve yourself to move on. You have a good few games to choose from that'll put your skills to the test. And the overall environment is just very welcoming. I like being able to click on things to see the little animations that come with them. The voice acting is great too. It has the exact same charm third grade had, even if it's much smaller of a game. I feel like they made the most with a really simple concept. As much as it utterly destroyed my fingers, I had a lot of fun with this. I always enjoy seeing these jumpstart characters I grew up with. They bring a sense of nostalgia that makes me feel right at home. I could be in the middle of nowhere, far away from civilization, but the voices of Notley and Polly would make me feel right where I belong. This was a cute little game that I was more than happy to check out. I will never not enjoy looking at a jumpstart game. So thank you for joining me. I will see you in the next memory. And there we have it. I finished the typing tournament, so let me out of this trophy room. Angry! Angry! Wait, you're still doing that?